Welcome to Asher Technology Group Partner Webcast Series. In today's session, uh, which is part of the Digital Laboratory, What the Future Holds series, I'm going to introduce uh, Biovia, who's going to be joining us today. So next slide, please. Biovia's presentation is entitled Lab Testing in the 21st Century. It's presented by Dassault Systems and Biovia. Before we get into today's presentation, I want to tell you a little bit about Asterix Technology Group, uh, who we are and what we're all about, and then we're going to pass it over to our uh, wonderful guests uh, from Biovia. So we can go to the next slide. So a little bit about Asterix, uh, who we are, why we're putting on this materials for all of you today, uh, etc. So real quick, we're an informatics professional services and staffing company dedicated to serving the scientific community. The company was established in 1995. It's privately held. It originated as an IT division from a company called APBI, which was a $300 million life science research organization. Uh, today, we operate from eight offices with a little over 800 employees uh, with headquarters in beautiful Red Bank, New Jersey. And there's two primary divisions of Asterix. There's a staffing division and a professional services division. The professional services division is who you're talking to today. We work with Fortune 1000 life science enterprises, governments, and research institutions with large and fast-growing IT staffing and compliance needs. The mission for Asterix has and always will be to deliver scalable, sustainable solutions in IT and staffing for the scientific community. Let's tell a little bit about some of the specifics of what we do within the professional services. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, there's a complete life cycle and end-to-end -end services span spanning the complete life cycle of scientific data systems. And what this means is we do things like business process analysis and enterprise architecture. This is where we help companies select the right solutions to fit their labs. And then we help them to design the systems in such a way that they work exactly as a company needs them to work. Uh, as this even goes to the selection of the actual technology uh, that will be used. And then once we do that, we work through things like the development and the implementation. Um, and then once that's finished, we usually go into the computer systems validation piece to make sure that everything is meeting the FDA regulatory guidance. Beyond that, we can even get into things like, you know, full hosting or even full managed services. Uh, and then finally, the, the staffing of uh, individuals to help you manage your systems or even just uh, scientific staffing uh, for individuals that you can place to work in your, in your laboratory. At the end of the day, uh, we evaluate, implement, and manage systems to enhance the collection and processing. Of scientific data. But that's enough about Asterix. That's not what you're here for today. You're here to learn about our friends at Biovia and their presentation. So I would like to introduce our speaker for today. And you can go to the next slide. Uh, it is Jean. Jean, I'm going to do my best with uh, Tetrialt, uh, the Senior Director of Product Management um, for Dassault Systems Biovia. Uh, that's Gene's contact information. Uh, Gene is a Senior Director of Unified Laboratory Management uh, at Biovia. He provides the vision, strategy, and management of the laboratory and operations product portfolio, which obviously includes things like uh, the ELN, the Electronic Notebook, uh, the Lab Information Management System, or LIMS, and the Laboratory Execution System. He brings 25 years of experience in life science industry, uh, developing and delivering lab informatics solutions for the research and development and quality control labs. So Gene, uh, you want to come on, and I hope I didn't butcher your last name too bad, Gene, but uh, welcome, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, thank you very much. You're not the first person to say Tetrialt. Uh, my, my last name is Tetro, like Dasso, uh, so French, and uh, I don't get paid extra for that, by the way. Um, so thank you, everybody, for joining today. Um, what I want to talk about is uh, the lab in the 21st century. And I want to share with you our view of that uh, from Biovia and um, you know, go over uh, how we accomplish that, talk about the value that our customers get and so forth. Happy to answer any questions at the end, of course. Um, really what, what people are looking for is um, listed here. They're looking for their scientists to do more science, less uh, tedious documentation, um, less um, non-value added uh, steps. And so we're looking to automate as much as possible. They're looking for collaboration in the lab. They're looking for an ability to work with their peers in their lab and across the ecosystem, both internally in their four walls and with their partner network. They're looking for what I call autonomous experiment execution. So the ability to execute the experiment and record what's happening as autonomously as possible. They're looking for things to be connected. They're, they're looking for um, connection to equipment, connection to uh, materials through barcodes, um, 
and connection to each other through uh, computer systems. And they're, they're starting to look at um, augmented laboratory experience. So how can we use adjacent technologies such as things like Alexa um, or a heads up display or um, uh, motion controls and things of like that for uh, aiding and what's what they're uh, doing in the lab. And they're looking for monitoring, uh, continuous monitoring of data. So as data is being generated, we're of course acquiring that gen that data. We're, we're storing it in a data store um, and warehouse or a lake or whatever it might be. And um, being able to gain insights from that data immediately, um, automatically using automation, uh, machine learning, uh, whatnot. And they're looking to be able to, to perform repeatable experiments that um, you know, are giving them the, the repeatable results. But then they're also looking to eliminate um, the need for repeating experiments. In other words, using the data that they have uh, to, to gain uh, insights without having to re-execute the experiments. And so what we hear a lot from our customers is they are, um, they have some type of lab of the future initiative. They're looking for some type of holistic end-to-end -end, uh, solution, trying to eliminate point solutions. And they're looking for digital continuity, what I call digital lab to plant. Um, the, the fact is, is that the number of candidates is going up and um, the smaller batch sizes are occurring and there's quicker turnovers required, there's disposable manufacturing, outsourcing and so forth. So they wanna have digital continuity between development and manufacturing to, to make it go quicker uh, and to provide this. In some cases, uh, there, there's a very blurred line between what is man development and what is manufacturing, especially as we get into cell and gene therapy. And to, to accomplish this, <clears throat> there's a lot of effort in the industry going on um, around standardization. Um, a lot of work with uh, defining ontologies, um, groups like Allotro, Pistoia, uh, et cetera, uh, working on these standards. Um, USP for process libraries, for standard methods, and um, standardization on how we can uh, connect to equipment and collect data in a more standard way, whether it's an allotrope data format or animal or CELA, whatever it might be. And of course, the, the regulations are not decreasing, they're in fact increasing and being able to have a total quality solution, you know, for CPV monitoring, metrics, continuous improvement, EH and S, et cetera. And luckily, there's, there's, we live in a time where software engineering is um, moving very rapidly. And so what we are looking for is what are the adjacent technologies that occur in other industries that have been developed uh, by software engineers to uh, streamline those other industries, such as data lake, um, cloud deployment, IoT, uh, software automation, machine learning, et cetera. So what we've done with one lab is to try to take those adjacent technologies and apply them to our uh, solution. So when we when we talk about one lab, just as an introduction, one lab is our solution um, that we offer for research, development, and quality control. So I'm going to talk a lot about one lab today. And one lab is used to optimize your laboratories and leverage the knowledge to improve the time that it takes for you to get a uh, candidate into the market. We have a series of process solutions or solution experiences. So we've taken not just an application approach, we've taken a solution approach. So we have solutions for research, development, and manufacturing, as you can see here. I'm not going to read all of them off for you. To accomplish those solutions, you know, we, if we, we need to take a look at what is the end-to-end -end laboratory workflow. Over on the right, we can really categorize the items on the right as the master data or the resources that you have in the laboratory. Every laboratory has inventory and where they're managing materials, lots, and they're managing the logistics of those materials and the containers and the regulatory around that. They have novel entities that they need to register. They have samples that they need to manage the life cycle of. They have equipment that they need to have uh, asset tags on. They need to acquire data from, they need to manage the metrology of that equipment. 
um, log books, et cetera. And then of course, um, you have your master data. Um, what are the different groups that you have, the roles, locations, reference data, and so forth. And of course, one of the key points of one lab is um, you have SOPs, you have recipes for making things, you have methods for analyzing things and SOPs for calibrating and cleaning and so forth. And then when you go into the lab, you need to plan your work, you need to manage your work, you need to execute that, and then ultimately you need to make a decision or uh, based on the data that you've acquired. So to do this design, manufacturing and test, all of this workflow is accomplished in one lab with a series of purpose-built applications that provide these types of capabilities. So we have, just like on your iPhone or your, your Android phone, you have different apps for managing your calendar or your contacts. In one lab, we have different apps that are specific to the types of things that you're doing in the lab. SysPro for inventory management, registration for uh, registration, of course, sample management, equipment, Compose for authoring recipes and methods, Lab Services, which is our foundational application for managing all of the reference data, task planning, capture, and then of course our ELN or ELNs, workbook and notebook, and then our data analytics capabilities, uh, discovery and insight. So kind of going from the ground up, I want to talk a little bit about one lab and um, one of some of the key concepts that we've uh, instilled in these applications and the overall um, platform that we've created. At the base of everything that we do, we have what we call unified lab services. This is a service oriented architecture which provides a standard, a scientific API, if you will, that's open for all of our customers and our partners to use, um, and that we use, in fact, to build our applications and to connect our applications together. This API is designed for highly regu regulated experiment-based processes. Um, so of course, we have all of the auditing, audit trails, signatures, part 11 capability, all built into the API, security, um, segregation of data, and so forth. So one of the core messages I want you to take away when you think of OneLab is that it's built on scientific services that are open and scalable and compliant. On top of those scientific services, we've built a reference data management system, again, with openness and standard, standardization in mind. So at the heart of what we do in one lab, of course, we need to have scientific units, vocabularies, and parameters. And the parameters are the things that you're going to, the measurements or the, the, the numbers or the, the results that you're going to capture. And those parameters are linked to equipment measurements, material characteristics, and action parameters or operation parameters for, for the processes that you're going to execute. All of these parameters um, and all of this reference data can be managed directly in one lab um, by you know, going through the user interface and typing in the values. But more importantly, they can be aligned with industry standards such as the allotrope AFO, which is the, the allotrope, AF, uh, allotrope foundation, foundation ontology or QUDT for unit management, and ISA for process libraries. And as we move forward with Pistoia, we continue to, to take advantage of uh, the, the methods work that they're doing. So you, we, we take these open services, we take these uh, this reference data, and on top of that, we put uh, the, the laboratory equipment. And the laboratory equipment management capability that we have in one lab gives us the, the ability to manage the assets, the ability to acquire data from those assets, the ability to enforce metrology and execute metrology SOPs to verify that the equipment has been verified and calibrated, cleaned, and is fit for use. And then of course, because we do this all electronically, we have electronic, log ele electronic equipment logbooks. But also, based on all of that, we have a best practice library of equipment interfaces that we've created over time. So OneLab is based on a, an extensible capability. So when you, when you get OneLab, of course, you have all of the equipment library available to you that we have today, but you have the ability to add additional equipment 
by just going into the user interface and configuring uh, the, the different types of interactions that you want to have with the equipment. It doesn't require you to recompile any of our software. So we come to you with our standard software, we bring our library to bear, and we give, um, we have the ability to add additional uh, equipment interfaces. In fact, our partners at Asterix have that ability to work with our customers and actually provide those types of interfaces, as well as our own uh, Biovia services team. When we collect data from the equipment, that data is collected either synchronously as, as while you're executing an experiment or a procedure, a method, or we can collect data uh, asynchronously. So as you're collecting, um, you're, you're running your device, your, your instrument in the laboratory, you might have a uh, UV Viz system where it has its own software package. And as part of that, you generate a report. You take that report, you put it in a secure location on the network. We will sweep the network, we'll pull the data, we'll, we'll pull those reports, we'll parse the data uh, asynchronously, and we'll put it in what we call our measurement store. The measurement store is effectively an index of all of the data from all of the equipment associated with all of the process and sample and information. And then that information is wirelessly communicated to our, your tablet um, or to our insight application or to your data lake so that you can use other applications like Spotfire or whatever it might be. And of course, that can be pulled directly into your electronic lab notebook. So one of the, the key core, the core concepts of what we do in one lab is we are a, an, a laboratory execution system. And um, what we've done is we've standardized the way that you build your um, methods, your recipes for making things, your methods for analyzing things, and your SOPs for calibrating and so forth. And we've built this using ISA S88, S95, uh, technology. So we've we have a model where we have an enterprise version of the recipe, which can be brought to a site and made site specific, uh, which can then be turned into a master. Which when we execute it, it's we we collect all of the data into a control. So there's this structured hierarchy of that S88 conforms to. We didn't invent S88. It's been around since 1988. Um, and it's been used in the process industry for in manufacturing. So most MES systems that exist today use some type of S88 format. What we've done is we've taken S88 into the laboratory. And as you can see on the right, an S88 recipe or method has a structure. You have stages, operations, and actions. And you can see that here illustrated in this picture. So this very simple process, a media preparation, uh, consists of multiple stages, prepare, measure, and register, multiple operations, add, mix, heat, and so forth. And each action has one or more, I'm sorry, operations has one or more actions, which are all parameterized with an, with an association to the material and the equipment. So following this structure, we can gather any of those parameter values and collect them into our system. And we have full context of what process stage operation action that parameter was collected against, but also the context of the material and the equipment that, that it is associated with. So one of the things that we've learned over the years is that it's very challenging to go and take these thousands of different analytical methods that you may have in different formats across your laboratories and to put them into an electronic format. So what we've created is a template um, structure. So you can create a method one time. In this example, it's a three component solution prep. And over here on the right, you can see in the circle that there are parameters, parameters for defining the name of the prepared solution, the different reagents that are used, the different volumes that are used, the units, et cetera. And then you can take this as a template and you can create one or hundreds of different solutions with this template. So in this example, I have an assay buffer. My assay buffer is made from block array, PBS, water, with the associated volumes, with the associated units, and so forth. And I might have a 
a cleaning reagent, a cleaning solution, or I could have a reference standard, or I could have a mobile phase. All of those solutions could be made with this same template. So I build the template once, I validate the template once, and I put in the parameters, and now I use it hundreds of times for all of the solutions. And using this exact same technique, we can build templates, and we are building templates for many different types of uh, laboratory operations, ranging from solution preparation to equipment metrology to analytical tests to bioprocessing, um, microbiology or EM tests, synthesis, uh, material processing, ASTM tests in other industries, um, and so forth. And eventually, we'll be able to list out, we'll be able to have a library of all of these different templates. And we're working very closely with all of our customers. You know, really, we've seen a, a transition from everybody wanted to do their methods their way in their lab, even in the same company, there might be multiple techniques across the company. What we're seeing is there's a big change. There's a change where the industry is driving towards standardization. And it's not just standardization of parameters and units, it's standardization of analytical techniques. Standardization that everybody wants to work together to build this library. Biovia is um, curating this library and ultimately build, um, producing it and, and um, delivering it back to our customers. So this is a, uh, a huge scaling um, uh, endeavor, and it gives us the opportunity to, to deliver value much quicker and to decrease the overall cost of ownership of implementing a lab solution. So when you go into the lab, you can see over here on the tablet on the right, um, this is what you would see. You can see your process on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, or if you zoom in, you can see all the different parameters that you're collecting. Um, and you go through and you automatically step down through the procedure and you execute and, and connect, uh, collect data from equipment. You perform validated calculations. You can enter observations. You can collect pictures. Uh, you can attach files. All of this is uh, done in a GMP uh, automatic fashion. And it, it allows you to enforce limits and tolerances and record different observations. And ultimately it drives the right first time um, execution into the laboratory. So of course, when we're executing these different methods, um, we need to have samples, right? We're, we're doing an analysis on a sample. So built into uh, one lab is a sample management capability. And not only the management of the samples, but when we do the testing, what are the specifications that we need to do that test against? What are the characteristics that we're going to measure? And what are the limits? And ultimately, um, all of that work is organized in what's called a task plan. A task plan is a series of tasks that you're going to execute to get to your final result. Now, we manage the samples in one lab, but we recognize that a lot of our customers have uh, limb system, and they might want to integrate their limb system with one lab, and that's a common pattern that we see. Now, of course, every lab has inventory, and in the lab, you might you might keep track of your consumable inventory of gloves and pipettes and things of that sort. You keep track of the different chemicals that you're uh, purchasing, or the solutions that you're preparing, or the biologics that you're uh, keeping track of. All of those are what we call materials in our inventory system. We have the ability to define all of the unique characteristics of the different types of materials. And then, of course, you have, you then receive a material or you make a material and you're going to have containers of that. You, we, of course, need to be able to know where all those containers are. They need to have labels on them. They need to have hazard information on them. Um, and of course, we need to have the, manage the logistics of, the, of those containers. So with a mobile app, you can walk into your inventory store, you can scan a barcode, you can check out a container, um, you can do in this, uh, inventory reconciliation and so forth. And a large part of what we do with inventory is we ensure regulatory compliance. So right down to the local codes, we have the ability to um, verify that your um, you're meeting all of the different regulatory uh, compliance, whether it's GHS or a local file code or whatever it might be.
of course, you know, largely what you're doing in the lab is you're executing experiments. You need to be able to document and manage um, the execution of these experiments. And what you see here on the right is a, a video playing showing um, an experiment for COVID testing. And in this, in this particular experiment, we have uh, various sections for documenting the SOP, for um, collecting the data, integrating with the lab, creating tasks, um, executing those tasks, pulling the date, the results back in. Uh, all of that is done in the cloud in a, in a web-based electronic lab notebook, all connected to the lab execution capability that I just spoke of. Biobia has been, um, you know, in the, in the industry since the, you know, for, for 20 plus years. And along that time, we've, a lot of what we've done is uh, based on a, a technology or an application that we call Pipeline Pilot. Pipeline Pilot is built into one lab and Pipeline Pilot gives us a pretty powerful capability to, um, to scientifically ETL data in the system. And what we do is we have these uh, components and the components allow us to read data, calculate on data, filter on data, visualize data, transfer data, and so forth. So we have more than 3,000 of these scientific components for managing laboratory work, for viewing images, for doing analysis, statistics, creating documents, integrating with databases, generating reports and dashboards, and so forth. So Pipeline Pilot behind the scenes allows all of our applications to interact with each other from a data standpoint, but also for us to interact between one lab and other systems. So we can integrate with your data lake um, using Pipeline Pilot. A particular event occurs in the lab, you wanna take some data from one lab, extract it, format it, and then send it off to the data lake. Pipeline Pilot is the mechanism for doing that. And there's really a, a cult following in the industry. Um, there's thousands of people in the industry that are using Pipeline Pilot um, in research, development, and even in QC to do all of these types of things. And this is built in, it's really the backplane of what we have um, uh, in one lab. Also powered by Pipeline, we have a very powerful visualization capability called Insight. Insight allows us to aggregate data um, scientific data from uh, various sources, from one lab and from other places, and pull it all together so that we can visualize it in forms. And what you see here is somebody working with a data set. You can see the chemical structure and you can see all the different attributes of the data. And they're filtering the data based on those different attributes. And you're showing, we're showing it here in a heat map, but we can also show it and visualize it in many other different forms. They could be uh, 2D, 3D uh, charts, they can uh, be documents, whatever it might be. And the, this is based on a templating structure that allows us to build these forms um, once, save them in a library, and then we can connect that to a data set, either a project or a study or an analysis. And uh, we basically run the data through this, um, this analysis tool, and the scientist has the ability to interact with that data. They can filter the data, they can add calculations on that data, ultimately get it to a point where they want to output the, the formatted document, if you will, and insert that into their experiment. Of course, they can open it up later and they can you know, revisualize it and so forth. So the in addition to you know everything that we've shown you so far is uh, web-based and cloud built with a cloud-first mentality. Now many of our customers have deployed one lab on-prem, um, and that's perfectly fine. We do that um, still all the time. But what we're seeing is now many of our customers are starting to to take advantage of the SaaS offering that we have, uh, which we call Science Cloud. So Science Cloud has been around for about 10 years, mainly in the research space in a non-validated way. And it was used, it is used to connect scientists with their partners. So uh, in Science Cloud, you can create a project and you can communicate between yourself and a CRO uh, and you can you know, 
spin up a project, create some type of uh, data exchange between you and the CRO and so forth. And this is done you typically in a very early research mode. Now all of one lab is available in the public uh, in the public cloud, but it's also it's validated. So we have a SaaS offering that we provide to our customers in a validated way. Customers have access to all of the validation uh, information and uh, through a portal, and they have access to all of the one lab capability through the user interface. Of course, this is all ISO certified and um, and we we uh, tout a 99.5% uptime for um, Science Cloud. So what we're seeing is that now uh, many of our customers are shifting over to this SaaS model. Um, certainly doesn't uh, require that all of our customers are there, but many are doing that today. So, you know, I'll say better, faster, greater value. It's it's better because we're digitally transforming what people are doing today. Um, on paper, we're harmonizing the, the data capture and the data format from research to development and um, commercial operations. And what we've built is based on next generation technology. It's all state of the art, um, web-based, cloud first, uh, very secure, very compliant um, technology. And we're implementing industry standards. We're implementing building blocks um you know taking this building block approach at building up methods and experiments and it's off the shelf um science business scientific business processes with automated validation in the background so time to value is much less and cost of ownership is much less and then of course with all of this there's an increased data utilization and knowledge transfer and um, keeping track of, uh, of inventory usage and equipment usage um, is providing much more value for our customers. So with that, um, I'm happy to answer any questions and, that you may have. And I put my example question here. You can ask me different types of questions if you'd like. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you, for, first of all, Gene, for a great presentation. Um, very, very informative. Uh, there are a couple of questions that have popped up, but again, I want to encourage everybody who's who's on the call, if you haven't asked the questions yet, you're welcome to do so. You simply type it into the question panel. Uh, when I read the question down, I won't read your name and I won't read your company. So uh, a couple things here. Um, first off, what I want to do is get the recordings.